Today we're going to be looking at a new add-on that can drastically improve your render times with cycles. Just a glimpse at what this add-on can do, at 50 samples and only rendering at 7 seconds, I got better results than my 1000 sample render that took 2-3 to three times longer. Even better, it adds temporal denoising, which means that we can get better denoising results on our animations. And for those curious, my rig is the GeForce 4090 RTX video card, and then I'm running one of the new AMD processors. So I'll link to information on those below. Now the tool we're looking at is going to be called Turbo Tools. And this tool's actually been a while for a while, but they just released an update adding Turbo Render which makes it a much more powerful tool, and I think it'll appeal to a wider audience. Now, Turbo Tools has a couple features, as you see kind of playing out here, that allow you to do several things within it. We're going to be focusing in on the render aspect. So with that being said, let's dive in and take a look at the add-on for ourselves. I would also like to call out that my crafty asset pack is on sale as part of For the Love Blender sale at 25% off. So I'll link to that in the description below if you're interested. So first things first, when you install this add-on, you're going to need to set a cache folder because this add-on will cache all of your renders before publishing. So as I mentioned, Turbo Tools kind of has multiple aspects to it, but the two primary things are its compositing workflow and its render options workflow. There's other options too, but those are kind of the two big features that it adds. And we're just going to be focusing on the render options over here. If you're curious about what it does in the compositor, is what it does is allow you to cache your various objects at different resolutions all down the compositing pipeline. And it actually has this full panel over here with all these various options. Now, as I mentioned, we're just going to be focusing on the render options, but if you are interested in that compositing workflow, there is an in-depth tutorial on the developer's YouTube page, which I can link to below if you're interested in learning about that entire workflow. So we're gonna dive into these render options over here, what they do and how they speed up the workflow. I actually spoke to the developer directly. I was asking how this add-on worked. It doesn't rewrite anything in Cycles itself. Instead, it uses a complex compositing workflow. So the speed increase doesn't come from magically turning on things in Cycles. It comes from doing a kind of better usage of open image denoising which is actually great because what that means is that as you update Blender, it should consistently work with the open image denoises and just continue to get better as the years go on. So let's take a look at the results it gives. Here you can see that with the normal denoise here that I rendered at 16 seconds at a thousand samples, and these are the results it gave me. And then I come down here to turbo denoise. It cut that down to 7.6 seconds. And you can see that the results are almost identical. And if I zoom way in here, you can actually see that I'm getting more information there, that this dirt right here in the thousand sample render has been softened. And then when I come here to the turbo denoise with the way it is handling denoising, I'm actually getting that detail back in the dirt and the grass. So even though turbo denoise is running at 50 samples, it's getting me a more detailed result than the thousand samples. Now, of course, there are limitations to this. Things like reflections and fog are probably going to render better without turbo denoise, but they actually have a bunch of options over here as well. Let's take a look at how these work. So here we have the turbo render options, which we can choose to enable or disable. And we have the denoise options here. We can go draft, medium, high, or ultra. And this is going to denoise more passes the higher you go up. And then the sampling presets that they recommend, or you can set it to yourself as user. Down here, we have if the image is very dirty or not, if it's interior, if it's an animation, whether we want to enhance textures or not. And then after that, we have all these options that are visible to the camera. And the more of these we tick on, the longer it's going to take the render and clean those passes, but the more accurate we're going to get. So here I have mine set up that surfaces, diffuse and glossy and world environment are visible to the camera. But since I don't have any volumetrics, I have that turned off. So you can go ahead and play with all of these here, but just by ticking these on and off, you can kind of optimize it for your scene and play with the presets. So next up, let's take a look at how it handles a heavy depth of field scene. And then we're gonna take a look at the temporal denoising. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those heavy depth of field render settings here. So one thing I liked about this developer is that they were very open, even on their sales page, about the limitations of the tool. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Here I have a normal thousand sample render. 
And then here I have the turbo setting set to high. And you can see that I'm starting to lose some of these particles that are being pushed way out of focus and it's creating some noise there. But I was able to fix that by just setting turbo to a thousand. So of course at turbo 1000, it's going to render in the same time as a normal 1000. However, the difference being that when I zoom in here, zoom way in so that you can see it on YouTube here, and I go to normal, you can see that I'm losing my edge there and that with the enhanced textures on, Turbo is actually bringing in some of these edges back and giving me an overall sharper picture with my textures, which of course is what I want. And then also another thing to notice is that even if you're using it on a less turbo optimized scene per se, you can still get better results with these textures, but also the temporal denoising effect as well, which let's look at that next. Now, if you don't know what temporal denoising is, what it does is it compares several frames of your animation and then denoises them collectively so that rather than getting that jittery noise that can occur, in animations, you'll instead get a smoother result with less noise. So let's take a look at how that works here in Turbo Tools. So to apply temporal denoising, what you first need to do is render out your animation. And what that's going to do is put it in the Turbo Cache. And then after that, what you do is you come over to your compositor, you open the Turbo Panel, you come down here, you click Remove Temporal Flicker, and you hit publish animation and what that's going to do is push it to your set output folder overriding that render cache so now if we come over to after effects we can see the difference i have here now i went ahead and used this same scene as before because what i found is that with this heavy depth of field and all the particles i was actually getting a lot of denoising artifacts now i know that YouTube's compression can ruin these things. So I'm gonna try and zoom in as close as I can to show you some of this. So where I was getting a lot of the issues were right around here. So I'm gonna go ahead, zoom in there, and hopefully you can see some of these bright spots over YouTube. And if I go ahead and hit play, you can see that those are kind of flickering on and off. Then if I go ahead and turn on the temporal denoising version, you can see that they're no longer there. And just zooming out here, we can see that I have a clean, smooth, denoised animated render. Now, I found in my testing that oftentimes I was saving uh, render times upwards of two to three times faster. And I'm using the GeForce 4090 RTX, as I mentioned on a bigger machine. And although my scenes are kind of dense and complicated at times, they're not super intense as such as an ArcViz scene. Now, if you head over to the developers page, they actually have some much more intense examples of the temporal denoising on larger scale scenes. And in the developers render times, they were using a, I believe a 1070, and they actually saw time savings of upwards to 15 times faster and then also having this temporal denoising so i'll go ahead and link to these videos if you'd like to see some additional tests and deep dive into the documentation in the meantime thank you for watching this video and also just a reminder that my crafty asset pack is on sale i always appreciate you watching thanks again